What is ray tracing? With the recent launch of the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S, I feel ray tracing is something we're going to hear more and more about since the hardware on both of these consoles support ray tracing. Uh, so what is it? What does ray tracing mean? Well, to put it simply, ray tracing is a way to render a 3D scene by simulating how light works in the real world, which then gives us the most realistic lighting and shadows possible. Now, you may be thinking, uh, there are already a lot of video games out there that have realistic looking lighting and shadows and whatnot. To which I agree with, but for the past few decades, game developers have been using a rendering technology known as rasterization. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about how rasterization works, uh, but when compared with ray tracing, you can think of it uh, more like an artist painting a picture. Uh, when an artist paints a picture of something, they use color and space to create an image that looks three-dimensional. Uh, they do their best to apply highlights, shadows, and varying shades of color to the image to make it resemble a three-dimensional object as much as possible. And even though they can create something that looks very real, uh, ultimately it is just the artist's best effort to make the lighting look realistic. And this is kind of how rasterization works. Uh, the artists designing the game are doing their very best to imitate the way light works in the real world. Ray tracing, on the other hand, is a completely different way to render graphics. Rather than an artist approximating the lighting, ray tracing is using math and physics to create a realistic simulation of light. My understanding is this creates less work for the artists to have to do. They can simply focus on creating characters and environments for their games, and then all the lighting, shadows, reflections, and other stuff are then handled by the hardware, simulating the lighting based on the parameters the game designer set. Wow. So, if ray tracing gives us actual realistic lighting, why hasn't it been used in video games until recently? Well, that's because since ray tracing is a simulation, it requires a lot of computing power to do the calculations required to ray trace a scene. Uh, until recently, GPU technology just wasn't good enough to do the calculations at the speed necessary to give a playable gaming experience. Before I go any further, I just want to say that this video is meant to be a high-level overview of ray tracing that I'm hoping will help slash satisfy the vast majority of people. If you want to know more and get into the details of how ray tracing works, there are some great videos on YouTube that you can check out. I've linked to some of them in the uh, video description. Be prepared to be a little overwhelmed when you realize how much data is being processed to ray trace an image. I, I mean, there's direct light, there's indirect light, reflections, refraction, and yeah, th there's just so much going on. Uh, it is a lot to wrap your brain around. Anyway, in 2018, NVIDIA released their RTX line of graphics cards that support real-time ray tracing through the use of dedicated processing cores on the GPU they call RT cores. Uh, these are processing cores that are purpose-built for doing the types of calculations required for ray tracing. Thanks to good marketing by NVIDIA, this led many people to believe that NVIDIA invented ray tracing. The truth of the matter is ray tracing has been around for decades. In fact, if you've watched any movies or TV shows that use computer generated graphics, uh, you've seen ray tracing in action. Avengers! All those Pixar and DreamWorks films that you watched growing up, uh, yep, uh, they were all rendered using ray tracing, uh, which is why the lighting in those films is so realistic looking. Uh, 
Just as an interesting side note, while doing research for this video, uh, I found a source that said there were some single frames in the Disney Pixar movie Monsters University that took over a day to render. Over a day for one frame. And that was using a movie studio render farm, which is comprised of many, many servers. But anyway, I'm getting off topic here. Uh, the point I wanna make is if you hear that Nvidia invented ray tracing, that statement is false. Uh, what they did do, however, is be the first company to bring hardware to the general public capable of giving us some real-time ray tracing in video games. Uh, as of the making of this video, there are four main ways ray tracing is being implemented into games, uh, and I'd like to fire up a few games to show you the difference ray tracing can make. The first method I'd like to look at is ray traced reflections. Uh, for this, I'm going to hop into Fortnite creative mode. For many years now, game developers have been using a technique called screen space reflections to create a reflection of an in-game object on another surface. As I'm standing here in this room, you can see the reflection of this archway, the wall sconce lights, and some of the other things in the room. But watch what happens as I move my mouse and look down at the floor. All those reflections are now disappearing. If you pay close attention, you'll see as an object goes out of view at the top of the screen, its reflection is disappearing from the floor. That is why this technique is called screen space reflection. As long as the object being reflected is on screen, it will be reflected onto an adjacent surface. But as soon as it's out of the screen, it's gone. Now imagine there's an enemy that is just off screen, but there's a reflective surface that in real life would reveal his location to you. With screen space reflections, you will never see his reflection until his character model is on your screen. And unless you can hear his footsteps or something, he's going to take you completely by surprise. Uh, ray tracing, however, changes this. Uh, here I am back looking at that same room and I can see the reflection of the archway, the lights and other objects on the floor. Only this time I've enabled ray traced reflections. Watch what happens now as I begin to look down. The reflections of all those objects remain even though they are now fully off screen. This means that scenario I talked about earlier where an enemy could be just around the corner, you'll now be able to see his reflection alerting you to his location. There's one more example of screen space reflections I'd like to show you now before we move on to one of the other ray tracing implementations. To do this, I'd like to go outside. Uh, on the outside of this castle, there are some giant windows that are really more mirrors than windows. As we're approaching them, you can see the reflection of this little fence around the castle and my character. Uh, but the closer we get, as things like the grass and the fence are no longer on screen, those things disappear entirely. And looking at my character's reflection, you can actually see it's my character's back that's on there and not her face. And when we get right up next to the mirror, you get this strange stretched out blur thing going on. Turning ray trace reflections on gives us an entirely different result. As we're approaching the castle, you can see the reflection of the background behind me. And if I move from side to side, the perspective changes, causing what's being reflected to shift accordingly. Uh, as we get up close, we never lose anything, and we can see the actual reflection of my character in the mirror. Uh, even when we get right up next to the mirror, we can see her face and everything. So a much better result than what we saw using screen space reflections. Another one of the effects currently being implemented is called ray traced ambient occlusion. Uh, ambient occlusion has to do with the shadows created by objects that are touching each other or are in very close proximity to each other. I actually had to do quite a bit of research on this before I really felt like I understood what ambient occlusion was. 
and there was one video in particular I really liked. Uh, I've linked in the video description if you'd like to check it out. Ambient occlusion in video games has been around since 2007, when it was first implemented as SSAO, or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, in the game Crisis. Uh, since that time, other, better AO techniques have been developed, but ray traced ambient occlusion is of course the most realistic to date. For the most part, this is one of these effects I feel is really subtle and goes unnoticed most of the time. Uh, the place this is the most pronounced is in shadowed areas. Uh, to give you an example of what it does, uh, this is a screenshot where I'm outside my Fortnite creative mode castle and I'm standing in an area that is completely covered in the shadow of the castle. Looking up at the architectural dentals here, you can see we have some variation in the shading, but here and even back here, the wall surface and the surface of the eave are more or less the same color, which isn't how it would look in real life. Uh, I, th I think this looks good, but it isn't realistic. This next shot is with ray traced ambient occlusion turned on. And now we're getting a much more realistic lighting effect. The underside of the eave is darker than the wall because far less ambient light is hitting it. And as I switch back and forth between the screenshot with ray traced AO off and on, you can see the entire scene is actually brighter because in real life, you would have a lot of ambient light from the blue sky uh, and light being reflected off of different objects and surfaces, illuminating this area, making it far less dark. Uh, you can even see a little reflected light from the wall over here, lighting these vines and these bushes, uh, which I feel makes this scene look a little better. The third ray tracing effect being implemented into games is called ray traced global illumination. Uh, this means we are using ray tracing to realistically simulate the lighting in the entire scene. The direct light from the sun, as well as ambient light and light reflecting off of one object onto another. Like ambient occlusion, global illumination has been around for a while, but also like other AO techniques, global illumination has always been an artist's approximation, whereas ray trace global illumination is a simulation of light. <laughs> Probably the most notable effect ray trace global illumination achieves is the way light reflected off of some objects will then tint an adjacent object with the color of that object. Uh, the best demonstration of this I was able to find in Fortnite creative mode is here on this short wall around the castle. With global illumination off, we see the wall is a very light shade of gray, almost white and we can see the carvings of these stars and rainbows. Uh, when I turn ray trace global illumination on, things look a little different. Now we have light bouncing off the grass onto this wall, and our shadows are now tinted green, uh, a bit more like we'd see in the real world. Also, when I go around the side of the castle and look at this wall, uh, that's completely in shade, there's a bit of a green cast to the wall from the light bouncing off the grass, lending a little of its color to the castle wall. When I turn global illumination off, this indirect light, or bounced light, is now gone, and the wall is very much gray again. Uh, for the fourth and final effect being implemented, uh, that being ray traced shadows, uh, I'm going to switch games because I feel Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a bit more interesting to look at when it comes to ray traced shadows. Ray traced shadows is the only ray tracing effect being used in this game because uh, it was one of those things that was added in after the game was already released. And because of how taxing ray tracing is on your hardware, it just makes sense to only use one effect at this point in time. Someday GPU technology will be good enough to render an entire game using ray tracing. But right now uh, is not that time. <laughs> so using it for a few of the effects in a game uh, is much more practical for now. Uh, currently, games that have implemented ray tracing into them 
are using a mixture of ray tracing and rasterization, uh, which will remain the norm until the day comes that uh, we can ray trace everything in real time, which I think is going to be quite a while still. Uh, to see the effects of ray trace shadows, I'm going to just have Lara stand here in the jungle and you'll notice the shadows of the leaves from the trees overhead being cast on the ground here. The shadows are quite defined and you can tell they're the shadows from the tree branches overhead. While they look good, they aren't exactly realistic because in reality, the further an object is away from the surface it's casting a shadow onto, the more ambient light is able to bleed in and diffuse or soften that shadow. So by turning ray trace shadows on, uh, we end up with much softer shadows, more in line with what we would see in real life. Uh, personally, I like the way the fake shadows look better, uh, but the softer shadows are more realistic. One very small detail I noticed is the shadow from Lara's bowstring. With ray trace shadows turned on, because of how close the string is to her shirt, you get a very dark, defined shadow. Whereas with ray trace shadows turned off, you get a shadow that is so faint, it's almost non-existent. So a question I've heard people ask is, does ray tracing make the graphics in video games better? Uh, my answer to that would be, I guess it depends on your interpretation of the word better. For me, making the graphics better means making them more detailed, uh, having higher resolution textures and stuff like that. At this point in time, ray tracing just provides more realistic lighting. The rasterization techniques that have been developed over the past few decades have created amazing and in some cases very realistic looking graphics. Uh, but in the end, they are all approximations and now that we are beginning to have hardware advanced enough to give us realistically simulated lighting, uh, which will save game developers time and money, I think we're going to continue to see ray tracing implemented into more and more games going forward. Right now, I feel most of the features ray tracing offers are so subtle that they just honestly aren't worth the performance hit that you take to turn them on. Uh, ray trace global illumination being the worst offender. Ray trace reflections is the one thing that I see currently offering real value to the gaming experience. Uh, being able to now see around corners and seeing other things in a scene by way of a reflection where it wouldn't have been able to be seen before is very cool in my opinion. Ray trace shadows, ambient occlusion, and global illumination are all neat, but don't really offer anything other than eye candy as far as I'm concerned, and I don't feel like the performance hit you take to enable them is worth it over using traditional rasterization techniques. Who knows, maybe someday there will be an implementation uh, that will make me eat my words, uh, but as for right now, this is how I feel. I'm just excited to continue seeing technology advance and see what kind of experiences there are in store. If you've enjoyed this video, I'm sure that you have watched enough YouTube uh, at this point to, that you know exactly what to do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have found the video informative and it helped you get a little better understanding of what ray tracing is and what we're seeing from it in games today. If you'd like to help support the work I do here on my channel, uh, please check out the link to my Amazon store in the video description uh, where you can purchase items I feature in my videos. As for now, uh, I'm going to shut up and get on out of here. Uh, I hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you in another video real soon. Until next time!